my name is Gene Hopkins, and I've been a member of the Pope and Young Club since I first joined back in 1981. I'm now a senior member from the state of Indiana. While I've never been an officer or a member of the board of directors of the club, I have a passion to preserve and protect the legacy of our sport for the benefit of those who come after us. In previous episodes of the Six on 60 series, we learned about how and why the club was formed and its many accomplishments during those decades. Now, as I tell the story of the sixth decade for our club, we should put some emphasis on how the club was, has preserved and protected that legacy through its world-class museum. After spending the first 40 years making history and building a legacy, it was time for the club to preserve and protect that legacy for future generations to enjoy and learn from. This actually began back in 1980, when Joe St. Charles convinced his father, Glenn, to reach out to Glenn's network of friends and former business associates to begin collecting items and memorabilia from the early days of our sport. The original St. Charles Museum of Bowhunting was located inside the family's business called Northwest Archery in Seattle, Washington. But as Glenn began to think more and more about the long-term options for the museum, he approached Fred Asbell, who was then the Pope and Young president, around 1998, about selling and gifting items to the club. Glenn's idea was that he would sell 50% of the value of the St. Charles Museum to the club and while gifting the remaining 50% to the club at no cost. Finally, in 2001, Glenn and his son Kevin made the trip to Seattle, Washington to begin overseeing the move of the St. Charles Museum into the new facilities in Chatfield, Minnesota to become the Pope and Young Club St. Charles Museum. Under Glenn and Kevin's oversight, the new museum layout was prepared, presented and approved by the board and construction began for all of the exhibits. Once the word was out that the club was creating a world-class museum of our bow hunting heritage, many members jumped in to help. Donations of money and of memorabilia came in from many different sources. Don donations and items came in from people like Marvin and Judy Klinke, Herman and Judy Kovar and Ron and Susie Shear, and Art Young's grandson, Chuck Young. From the very beginning, one of the most popular parts of the museum were the various dioramas showing the different time periods in our sports history. As you walk through the museum, you would start with a diorama which showed a lifelike wax figure of Ishii kneeling beside a very lifelike wall painting of the scenery which was recreated from photographs of the actual area where Ishii lived prior to 1911. Dioramas were also created for Saxon Pope, Art Young, Fred Bear, and Glenn St. Charles. Surrounding these dioramas were the actual equipment and items from the subject, such as the arrows from Ishii, the bows and arrows belonging to Saxon Pope and Art Young, and the actual workbench from Glenn's shop in Seattle. All told, the museum in Chatfield was indeed world-class in its design and its artifacts, and was seen as a model for how to tell the story of our past while helping people understand why it's so important to preserve our heritage by protecting our past. But all things change, and by a vote of the Board of Directors in early 2021, it was decided to move the museum from Chatfield into a new building to be constructed at the Wonders of Wildlife Complex in Springfield, Missouri. Many factors led to this decision by the board. The building in Chatfield was in need of significant investment of funds to keep the maintenance up to date. But most, the most critical aspect of the decision to move was the ability to reach as many people as possible with the fantastic exhibits and the story of the wonderful history of our sport. Figures show that over a million people each year visit the Wonders of Wildlife Complex, and by reaching more people, we can expect the museum to be a significant factor in, in increasing recruitment into our sport and growing our club. Every change is difficult, and the board of our club has made these changes based upon what they perceive is best for the future of our museum, for our club, and for the bow hunting lifestyle, which is so important to all of us. Thank you for your commitment to our great sport. I hope to see you around a campfire someday soon.